right, folks, I hope you're all having a good Wednesday. Quick update here. Uh, we're going to go over a few Bitcoin-related metrics to talk about the markets right now and see what kind of divergences are forming uh, after what appears to be at least a small bounce that's currently happening at the time of this recording. Uh, obviously, Tuesday was not a good day at all for crypto. It was an even worse day for the S&P 500. What we're looking at right now is the price of Bitcoin here in green. We're just looking at a little one hour interval between each uh, fluctuation in this line. And then the S&P is here in blue. You can see that if I overlay it on the, the blue line, it correlates pretty pretty closely to Bitcoin. And this correlation has been going on for the majority of 2022 and even going back toward late December. Um, and typically, this isn't the best recipe for success for crypto. We want to see uh, the correlation be non-existent between equities and cryptocurrencies, not an, uh, a, a tight correlation where they both go up and down the same way, not an inverse correlation where uh, the S&P goes up and Bitcoin goes down or Bitcoin goes up and the S&P goes down. We want to just see absolutely no reliance from one sector toward the other. Uh, and that tends to be a signal that bull runs uh, have the highest probability of coming to fruition. Um, we see, you know, at least the last time we saw a good uh, sign of that was probably around the second week of March here, where the S&P kind of stayed down here and, the, and Bitcoin kind of had a little bit of a breakout. Gold did as well, which was interesting. Um, and since that time, you can see just how tightly uh, correlated the two were. But just today, or I should say yesterday, when the S&P was open, they absolutely plummeted. While Bitcoin did drop, but not nearly to the extent. Uh, I don't know what the exact percentages are, but um, I know that Bitcoin was able to stay afloat a lot better than uh, the S&P. Now, altcoins did get decimated pretty badly. Um, and they do appear to be recovering right now. Who knows whether that'll continue shortly after this recording ends. Uh, I'll save that type of analysis for another video. But as of now, I think it's at least mildly encouraging that we see uh, a little bit of holding up uh, on, the, on Bitcoin's end, despite equities markets continuing to bleed. Now, I am looking at futures markets on the S&P 500 right now and seeing that uh, the S&P is, as of now, due for a rebound day where it, it, it at least looks to be planning to open in recovery mode. Who knows if it will give up those gains right away um, or if it'll even be that way uh, in about seven hours when the market's open from the time of this recording. Um, but it is probably still a fairly tight correlation. I would just keep an eye on uh, the fact that Bitcoin has stayed relatively up while the S&P has plummeted. Obviously, you know, in, in real world news, there have been plenty of reasons why they have been so tightly correlated with inflation concerns. Uh, the FOMC making its announcement last month that they're raising uh, interest rates up a quarter percentage. And in May, we're due to see a potential uh, secondary announcement of another quarter percentage added to interest rates, um, which would be bad news for the S&P. But some are arguing that it's already beginning to be baked in uh, after it. We saw maybe like a two week recovery after the first one. People were already preparing for the second one. And it's highly theorized that Bitcoin has been uh, pulled down along with it. Uh, gold is there, by the way, just to illustrate another sector that is essentially moving in its its own Kind of direction. Uh, we are seeing that all three, gold, the S&P and Bitcoin have fallen in tandem for uh, at least the last week or so here. Um, and that's interesting. We'll see which one really starts to show uh, the clearest sign of a rebound first. And it will, of course, happen eventually for one of these three. And eventually all of these three will uh, not fall forever. Um, but that's just a little tidbit there. I think the correlation is always important to take a quick glimpse at and see where we're at. 
As far as some other unique metrics that you may not see us talk about too much, uh, the first one I wanted to look at is the average MVRV. What I set up here is seven, seven different time frames for uh, short, midterm, and long-term MVRVs, which are average trading returns. Combine them all together and see when uh, short, mid, and long-term traders are either profiting heavily or bleeding heavily. And uh, we're only looking at the last month, but if I were to look at the last year, you would better bet that when this pink line is high, that tends to be when tops occur. When this pink line is low, that tends to be when bottoms occur. Um, it's pretty accurate uh, most of the time. I, I even like it more than the 30-day MVRV a lot of the times, uh, especially if you're looking more on a month-to-month -month basis instead of day to day or week to week, like 30 day MVRV is a little better for. Um, and right now we're seeing that it's, it's toward that bottom end still. Um, it, it obviously just at the end of March, God, this was already about a month ago. That was the last time it was actually above uh, its normal expected resting state, which would be right at the 0% line. Uh, and then it's plummeted ever since which obviously makes sense because prices have dropped back down and they got, uh, they're in the 38 Ks, right. Or, or they were in the 38 Ks right now. They're kind of rebounding a little bit and are right around 39 at this moment. But, um, as long as it's below zero here, especially about more than midway down toward like the lowest point that it's been at in the last year, which was here in, in late January, that's a pretty good sign that it is at least, a less risky time to enter into a position uh, uh, for Bitcoin than usual. Uh, obviously not investment advice. You'll notice I'm not giving any predictions here, but what I can say is based on historical evidence, uh, this is a better time to add on to your position or open a position uh, than usual. You'll also notice, I'm going to take this one off now, this red area chart is measuring the short midterm traders, which is the aforementioned 30-day MVRV, to the long midterm traders, which is the 90-day MVRV. Uh, generally speaking, when the short uh, average trade returns are a bit ahead of the 90-day returns, that's when the tops tend to come to fruition. Shout out to one of our community members for pointing out this really interesting indicator. Um, we tend to see bottoms when the short terms are, are far, falling behind the 90-day um, MVRVs and vice versa. You'll see when they're way ahead, uh, tops tend to occur. Um, right now, interestingly, the short terms are still a little bit ahead of the mid-long terms uh, because obviously Bitcoin really, really got hammered in January and February uh, before its March recovery. So it makes sense that two out of those three months, those 90-day traders were really hurting. Uh, and the 30-day traders, uh, while also being down a bit, uh, are not struggling quite as much as the 90 days, which is why we're actually seeing this above zero. So ideally, we'd like to see that pink line that I just showed, as well as this red line, both below zero, um, kind of as it was here in late January when we were starting to recover and then kind of got held up by the war news right here um, and eventually got that big recovery. But long story short, I'd say we're in a better, <coughs> better spot, excuse me, <coughs> better spot than the average in terms of those two metrics combined. And if you really want to be precise, you can gamble and hope that this red line goes below zero, which would be a very golden opportunity to buy low. Another good metric I like to check out from time to time would be the active addresses versus price at any given moment. Uh, there are constantly high active address days despite a price retracement, and those are the kind of things that would cause a bullish divergence because utility is rising despite market caps shrinking. Uh, so right now, because prices have been declining for the past give or take four weeks now, um, active addresses have more or less stayed pretty steady, which is why you're seeing a gradual rise in the divergence between active addresses and prices. And this is actually one of the best 
spots we've seen over the past year. There have been plenty of spikes that are a bit be above this. Uh, but right now, according to this chart, if we took all of the active addresses uh, on a day-by-day -day basis for Bitcoin and divided that by the price, uh, we're just at about 7.9. Uh, I take that back. So we would be at 27.9. I subtracted 20 just to make it a little tighter on the axis because this is a custom metric. But long story short, you can basically compare the highs and lows against each other on this chart and you'll see some pretty nice alpha. Um, and it's trying to re refresh right now. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll make it a little easier and just do an hour. There we go. So while this is high, You'll generally more likely see bottoms. We can see that, you know, when we were spiking at the highest points back here in May of last year, um, we were obviously approaching a bottom and it eventually came to fruition. Again, right here, this was one of its highest points. Big bounce if you bought in right at the high, one of the highest points there. Uh, and it continues. I mean, this is kind of a shorter term indicator. Uh, you can make it longer term. I can make it, uh, you know, one day here and one day here, and you can still see some nice alpha coming. That same spike is still very prevalent there. Um, this one didn't really come to fruition. I, I was interested to see what would happen here, but it kind of stayed stagnant, probably because of the uh, correlation to the S&P and how much they've been struggling right now. Um, but you generally just want to avoid when you're well below this line and want to get in when you're well above this line on the active address versus price divergence chart. Uh, another one that's interesting is the positive versus negative sentiment. Now, as more people come into the crypto space, as there have been many new faces and more uh, commentary coming in over the past year as we made multiple all-time highs in 2021, you'll see more and more of a bias toward positive sentiment um, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. But look at this big spike. This is the ratio of all of the comments that we gather on Twitter, Discord, Telegram, Reddit, and even a few pro traders chats that we have access to. Um, and it's telling us that there were about 25 times more positive comments than there were negative comments at this peak here. Uh, alternatively, if we look here, only three times as many. Uh, positive versus negative comments. Um, not the most correlative metric by any means. Uh, we tend to see a little better alpha, like longer term. So if I bulk this into a week um, and you really saw the highest positive spike, that is right before a top. This one, interestingly, is even above that. Um, but perhaps that's part of why prices are going down because there's so many people calling for a dip buy, as we talked about earlier today, <clears throat> there is a spike in buy the dip calls right now, which could be natively impacting the price. Waiting for capitulation happen could be to happen could be wise. Um, but all things considered, this is a bit of a scary site considering the ratio between positive versus negative commentary is growing. And we'd rather see people showing a ton of FUD and worry and, uh, fear that prices are never going to recover because that historically is when prices do recover. And then finally, average funding rate. Um, I'm going to zoom in because these spikes absolutely dwarf the chart. So we'll do last three months. And we have a lot of noise on this. I'm going to make it even shorter. Let's do a month. Yeah, I think month a month will be fine. So Generally speaking, this is the chart that tells us where traders are, are putting their money where their mouth is. Uh, if they are up high like this, it means there's an excessive amount of longs and people betting in favor of the price going up are actually paying people who are shorting uh, to go long. Um, and when that happens, liquidations on the long side tend to occur and prices are more likely to go down. Vice versa, if we see an excessive amount of shorts like we saw here, that would be a great example of short liquidations occurring um, because prices rose probably partially due to funding rates being so low, among many other reasons. Uh, it doesn't always come to fruition, though. You can see this short spike 
um, on exchanges didn't really do much to the price at all. Maybe there were a few liquidations just in, in the slight upticks going on here, but eventually prices actually dropped down. Uh, but given enough time, if you really see a lot of negative funding rates, uh, you're in a good spot to be buying against the crowd uh, when the crowd is likely to uh, see some form of liquidation like we're seeing in these two big spikes here. I'd say that's a promising sign. And if, if the liquidations do start to happen just from these small rises, that's only going to work as rocket fuel to propel the price up further. So take note of that. I think this is a very, very good sign right now, probably the best sign that I've shown on this video. Uh, and I would keep track of any exchange that you want. This is combining a few different exchanges that we have, but we've got Binance, FTX, DYDX, Deribit, um, and BitMEX funding rate data that you can check out, not just for Bitcoin, but for hundreds of different assets, depending on what kind of uh, coins you have your eye on right now. So that's just a few metrics and uh, a quick little Bitcoin update that I wanted to give you. Obviously, we will do a more comprehensive uh, coverage on Friday. I may release, release another video before then. Uh, but for now, uh, stay safe, trade responsibly, continue to check out the metrics here on Sandbase, whether you're a free member or a Sandbase Pro member. Uh, I hope you are finding our data helpful and don't forget that we're always available on Discord to help clarify anything that needs to be clarified. Cheers, everyone. I will talk to you soon.